My name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the HESI. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the HESI Admission Assessment Exam Review, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Right now, we are in the process of solving the problems having to do with the notion of multiplication of fractions. We are doing sample problems that you find on page number 2, page number 21, please don't do it, page number 21, sample problems. We did problem number 4, 5 and 6 yesterday, we're going to pick up from problem number 7. In the event that after finishing problem number 7, 8 and 9 and 10, if in the event that you find that that's not enough, the, those 10 questions that they give you for exercises are not enough and you wish to get some more problems for exercises if you need to practice some more there are there are some other problems that you can find just type in T's day 5 and T's day 6 and you will find problems having to do with multiplication of fractions the math on the T's as you know is very similar to what you will encounter on HESI in addition to that there is always this series of basic math in the basic math series, if you type in basic math day 51 or day 52, those are two more days there where you will find some more, uh, some more practice problem dealing with the notion of multiplication of fractions. Let's get, let's get going. Enough of the talk. Number seven. Number seven says, number seven, we have to multiply three and, three and one third, three and one third by two, three and one third by two. Now, here, we are, we are asked to multiply two numbers, one of them happens to be a whole number. Let's put that whole number first, it makes it easier. Two times three and one third. Watch what happens. It's very simple, very easy. Two times three is six, and two times a third would be just two third. There you go, that's your answer. Six and two third is the answer. You don't have to do any mumbo jumbo business of converting that into an improper fraction or all of that thing. Just multiply it out. Two times a three is six and two times a third would be two third. Let's do number number eight. Number eight is asking us to figure out one and eight twelve one and eight twelve times four and a half times four and a half. Let's see what we can do. Alright? Let's see what we can do. Before you dive into before you dive into the problem and before you start investing time into doing it out, something that you know is going to take some time, see if there is any estimation that you can do. You have to have some gut feeling as to what you're looking for. Sometimes that's enough. Sometimes that's enough to locate the right answer. Sometimes that's enough for one to be able to locate the right answer because you know, nobody's asking you to actually solve the bloody thing. You simply have to be able to recognize one of the four answer choices as the right answer. Let's see what we're going to do here. Very first thing we're going to do here, I find it annoying that it's 8 over 12. If you can reduce it, if you can reduce it, reduce it right away. Divide top and bottom by 4, so it becomes 2 and 3. It's 1 and 2 third times 4 and a half. Times 4 and a half. Is there anything at all that we can achieve here? Uh, 4 and a half. 4 and a half times 1, 4 and a half times 1 is just 4 and a half, and then 2 third of 4 and a half. Oh, this is very simple actually. Listen, 2 third, it's actually very simple. 2 third, okay, watch, okay, listen carefully. 2 third of 4 and a half. Think of 4 and a half, think of 4 and a half, think of 4 and a half as 45. It makes it easier for you. What is the third of 45? Listen very carefully. So we multiplied, we only did this part. We only did this part, we did 1 times 4.5 is just 4.5, we we're done with that part. Now, to, we, now we're trying to figure out 2 third of 4.5, 2 third, 2 third of 4.5. Well, think of 4.5 as 45, what's a third of 45? A third of 45 is 15, isn't it? If third of 45 is 15, then 2 third of 45, 2 third of 45 would have to be 30. We don't have 45, we have 4.5, we have 4.5, 4.5, it's just going to be 3, it's just going to be 3. Oh, there you go, we found the answer, the answer is 7.5, the answer is 7.5. Now, if you don't like what I just did here, or in the event that you're able to, uh, in the event that you're unable to 
uh, see uh, this uh, this point of view. You are unable to take on this this perspective. In that case, we'll have to we'll have no choice but to do it out. So let's do it out. It's not it's not, it's not going to take that long. So one more time. What was given to us was 1 and 8 twelfths. Very first thing we did, we reduced the 8 twelfths to 2 thirds. So it's 1 and 2 thirds times 4 and a half. Well, 1 times 4 and a half is very simple, it's just 4 and a half. Now we have to take a 2 thirds of 4 and a half. 2 thirds of 4 and a half, well, that's the same as taking a 2 thirds of 45. Two, 1 third of 45 is 15, therefore 2 thirds is going to be 30. Since it's 4 and a half, you just take a decimal point here, it becomes 3. So it's 3 plus 4 and a half, 7 and a half. Let's do it out. So let's write this as two third, and then convert this into mix uh, into improper fractions. So one would have to be written as three over three plus two third. One is made up of three thirds and a two thirds. So that's going to be five thirds times four and a half. So four is same as eight halves plus a half, because eight over eight over two is four. Four plus a half is going to be nine and a half. 9 and a half. Let's see what we can do. We see a 9 there, we see a 3 there. Let's divide top and bottom by. Let's divide top and bottom by 3. 3 is going to go away and 9 is going to become 3. 5 times 3 is 15. 15 divided by 5. 15 divided by 2 rather. 15 divided by 2 is same as 14 divided by 2 plus 1 divided by 2. And 14 divided by 2 is 7 and a half. Which is exactly what we said a little while ago. It's just a different way of doing it. This is this what you see here is more of a traditional way, orthodox way, classical way, geeky way, the nerdy way, the academic way, if you will. And like I said, if you do not see a uh, uh, non-traditional way, then of course traditional way is the only salvation. But as you can see, it's not that bad actually. Let's do number nine, the penultimate problem. The penultimate problem. The second to the last problem, penultimate is the word, we learned that on day number 11 of our vocabulary lessons, vocabulary words, day 11, and the video will pop right up where we learned the word penultimate. Number 9 says, number 9 says, Alex has six friends who each give him two and two-third pieces of gum. What the hell? Two and three-quarter pieces of gum. How come I never had a friend who gave me two and three quarter pieces of gum? Makes me jealous. Not bloody fair, is it? So we have, he has six friends and each of them is going to give him two and three quarter pieces of gum. How many pieces of gum does Alex have now? I envy the genius of the people who write these questions. Let's do it out, shall we? It's very simple, very straightforward. 6 times 2 is 12 plus 6 times 3 quarter. Let's do it here. 6 times 3 quarter. One more time. 6 times 2 is 12 and then 6 times th 6 times 3 quarter. Six, 6 times, oh it's not 6 times 3 quarter, sorry, it's 6 times, that's right. 6 times 2, 6 times 2 is 12, and 6 times 3 quarter, we, let's find out. We see 6 here, we see a 4 here, let's divide top and bottom by 2. 4 is going to become 2, and 6 is going to become 3, so it's 3 times 3, which is 9 over 2, which is 4 and a half. 9 over 2 is 4 and a half, plus the 12, don't forget the 12. So it's just going to be 16 and a half. 16 and a half. That's all. The answer is... 16 and a half. That's all. Let's do number 10. The very last one. In the very last one, they tell us, I'm not going to write the problem on the blackboard, I'm just going to read it to you. They tell us that Ricky rides 11 and 1 8 mile an hour with his bike in the second gear going uphill. Oh, good for him. Let's make a note. 11 and 1 8 miles per hour. 11 and 1 8 miles per hour going uphill. So far, so good. 
If Ricky writes downhill in the fourth gear, it's good to know that they give us information about the gear. They know that we really give a damn. If Ricky rides downhill in the fourth gear, he goes two and a half times faster. Alright, so essentially he's going to go two and a half times faster downhill. Now I'm going to read one more time slowly because I don't not like the language of it. He, if Ricky rides two and a half if Ricky rides downhill in the fourth gear, he goes two and a half times faster. No, the language is not correct. He, two, he goes two and a half times faster. Goes, goes two and a half times faster. That language is not correct. That is not what they meant to say. Or maybe they did mean to say it that way. That will depend on what the answer is in the back. We'll find out. Let's first talk about it. To go two and a half times faster, for example, if you were going 10 miles per hour, if you were going 10 miles per hour, two and a half times faster is 10 plus 25. This is two and a half times. That's not, I think, that's not what they meant to say. They meant to say he goes two and a half times the speed. He goes, goes two and a half times the speed. Not faster. Faster to go two and a half times faster. For example, if I tell you that I have one dollar and you have two and a half dollars more than I do, well, that's three and a half dollars. It's a very different, very different thing than saying that I have one dollars and you have two and a half times the amount. I have ten dollars and you have two, two and a half times the amount. In which case, you have twenty-five dollars. But if I have ten dollars and you have two and a half times more than I do. But that's 25 plus 10. That's 35. The language is very lousy. Anyway, enough of the enough of the talk. Let's do it out. We'll soon find out whether the language was improper by by doing it out and see what it is. So let's do two and a half. Let's do 11 and 11 and one eighth. 11 and one eighth times two and a half times two and a half. Again, had it been had it been a real exam, had it been a real exam, I wouldn't be, it would be we wouldn't be so damn silly to actually sit there and do it out. Just approximate, just, just approximate for crying out loud. Forget that, forget about the one eight part. Pretend that eleven and one eight is approximately eleven. Eleven times two and a half is what they're looking for. That's gonna be close enough for the real exam. Eleven times two, eleven times two is twenty-two, plus eleven times half, eleven times half is just eleven halves. Eleven half is same as ten halves plus one half. That's your eleven halves, and ten halves is five. In other words, eleven halves is five and a half. So it's twenty-two plus five and a half. The answer is twenty-seven and a half. The question is: Is this twenty-seven an underestimation or an overestimation? We are approximating it, but is this final answer of twenty-seven and a half is that an overestimation or an underestimation? In other words, when we look at the answer choices. When we look at the answer choices, are we going to be looking for something that is slightly more than 27 and a half, or are we going to be looking for something slightly less than 27 and a half? Let's find out, shall we? You see here, the original quantity is 11 and 11 and 1 8. We rounded that 11 and 1 8 to 11. We are underestimating. We are underestimating. That means that tells us that the correct answer, whatever it is, is going to be slightly more than 27 and a half. Slightly more than 27 and a half. And when you look at the answer choices, you will find that there is only going to be one answer choice that is going to be slightly more than 27 and a half, and that's your answer. To sit here and actually do it out would be damn silly thing to do. Would be damn silly thing to do. I'm going to tell you what the right answer is in the in the real exam. They tell us uh, 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 right right answer is uh, the exact answer. That is what I meant to say. The exact answer is 27 and 13 16. 27 and 13 16. We said it's slightly more than a half. Half would have been 8 16. There's only going to be one answer choice that's going to be slightly more than 27 and a half. That's your answer right there. We're not going to actually <coughs> we're not going to actually sit here and actually do it, do the bloody thing out. There'll be a damn silly thing to do in the in the real exam. I'm not going to do it here either. So as you can see, that's what they meant to say. That when he's going downhill, when he's going downhill, he's going two and a half times the speed. That's what they meant to say. 
is going two and a half times the speed, not two and a half times faster. That's a different meaning. That's a different language. They they took they take too many lib too much liberties with the language. They are too sloppy in their in the, in, the, in their wording. It annoys the hell out of me. He's not going two and a half times faster. He's going two and a half times the speed. I'll see you tomorrow. Okay. Bye now.